in retrospect, do you think it was ever possible what he was doing, what the Workers' Party was doing? Is it possible to make that kind of change without armed rebellion? I think it is possible, but it's part of a global solution we have to find of how to control capitalism. I think capitalism cannot no longer go on deregulated as it is. We're in the verge of a mass extinction. We're in the verge of collapse of democracies worldwide. And I think that is very related to the fact that eight men control half of the world's wealth. And there is no control of how this, this, these big bunnies are interfering with the democratic processes worldwide, be it through lobby, be it through illegal uh, manipulation of social media, and we're all suffering the consequences of that. But I mean, you have the, the and the intercept has more, but you have some of the leaked footage, because everyone seems to have been being taped, of the heads of, of construction companies saying, we've got to stop Dilma in this case, as her investigations, before it comes to get us. And you just referred to it. It's like, how did you say we got to grapple with capitalism? How? I mean, I have to say, I kind of came away feeling like, well, if you organize for 30 years of people's movement you, through unions, we have mass strikes as you did in Brazil. Yeah. You have um, an intersectional, an organization dealing to some extent with race and sex and gender and social inequality. He runs not once, not twice, not three times, but four times before he gets elected president. Is it that he made concessions at the end? It, I mean, talk about the choices that he made and how you feel in all of this and your family feels in all of this. Because mm -hmm. I'm still reeling from the impact of the film, but you've clearly lived with it for a while. Well, in Brazil's case, as one of the people from the Workers' Party say, kind of in a very good self-criticism, the mistake was to let go of the social movements and not, and kind of accommodate to power. So let go of them once you have moved into the palace. Yes, and believe that politics was made just with the Congress and with the big businesses. So social movements in Brazil got weaker during the time that the Workers' Party was in the government. There was not an in, a, 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 there was not a strong way of getting people politicized and understanding that the reason why they ascended socially was because of political rules and political uh, actions. People think today, and I interviewed many people who say that, that they ascended socially because of God or because of their own effort. So that is in Brazil's case. But I think what is happening in Brazil is extremely tied to what is happening in the world and influenced by big companies in the United States because what, the consequence, if you look at it, is that after Dilma's impeachment and Lula's prison, the gun and the oil industry in Brazil are the ones that have, are the biggest winners of this whole effort. Now gun is being deregulated, anyone can start buying a gun in Brazil, and the oil industries are very happy that Petrobras is, is on the way of being privatized. The national so, oil company. Our national oil company. So this is very intertwined with regulating these companies worldwide, I think, like, and also with what is happening in the Amazon. The Amazon is already at the tipping point of what it can be deforested. If it's deforested a little bit more, it can turn into a savanna. Mm. And what, who, it's soy companies that are deforesting the Amazon. So there is these, not just the construction companies, but these big economic interests be behind what is happening there. You mentioned the forest, you begin with the tree. You mentioned forgetting. And in a way, I kind of came away from the film thinking authoritarianism is democracy that never you know, democracy that never apologized. You know, democracy founded on forgetting is what you say. Yes. What I'm hearing is that in addition to the political, in addition to the economic, there's also a spiritual something. Definitely. Talk about that. And what do you mean by Brazil being a democracy founded on forgetting and why is that relevant that you start with the tree? Yes, I think. And the slaves. Yes. Brazil, as the United States, is founded on the genocide of the indigenous population. 
then on three centuries of slavery, and then on a brutal di military dictatorship. For none of these three things have we ever apologized or done a pact of, like a civilizatory pact of reestablishing democracy in a different way. They tried, Lu, uh, Dilma and Lula's government did a memory and reconciliation uh, that was to acknowledge the crimes committed during the military dictatorship, but they decided not to punish. In the end, that created a dysfunctional democracy because it opens the path for Bolsonaro to, during Dilma's impeachment, he voted in the memory of Dilma's torturer of the man responsible for the torture of Dilma. We're talking actual many days, many weeks or months torture under the military dictatorship before the arrival or the, the, the fight for democracy. In, yes, in Dilma Brazil. was in prison for two years and brutally tortured. And for people, well, and for him to say as well that the, the mistake of the military was not to kill more, be, not to kill 30,000 people. Uh, who would have been your parents? Yes, who would have been my parents. So how can we as a society accept that? It's because we are founded on forgetting. Brazilians have for many centuries thought that it's better to forget, otherwise you will create um, hatred or, or, yeah, just intolerance. But when you forget, you're kind of putting yourself in the curse of repeating the mistakes of the past, and that's where we're at. The, the moment in your film that actually brought me to tears, and maybe it's predictable, but it's the moment where Lula is mourning his wife, who has died from a heart attack after having also been indicted. The scene is, of course, one of mourning, but what struck me, and I think actually moved me to tears, was to see a man at the center of a political struggle crying publicly. And I wondered, how our lives would be different and our political lives would be different, thinking about that forgetting, if we had more expression of real remorse and mourning um, yes. for what we've all lived through as a species <laughs> and been responsible for. Completely. For me, the idea of trauma is very inspiring because when you live through a trauma, and I think my, all my films are about trauma. <laughs> and I should say, this is part of a trilogy. Yes. The most political, really, of a trilogy of films. Yes. I, I think we're always going through traumas and, our, and we need to learn how to appreciate them, how to understand that they are also a source of strength, that stopping and um, acknowledging the vacuum of meaning that is created by a traumatic experience, be it personal. My first film is about the suicide of my sister and my attempt to reconstruct her past and her memory. And, and the trauma I had uh, and relived in making this film of having lost a sister when she was only 20 years old was very transformative in just dwelling in the pain. I think we have unlearned how to dwell in the pain, how to dwell with death, how to dwell with suffering. And we try to go past it as fast as possible. And it, it, it haunts us forever if we do it. We, it. we need a space to reverence it and to apologize for our responsibilities in it and to contemplate and, and feel love for the ones that are suffering through that trauma, be it ourselves, be it the ones that are more vulnerable. And for me in making this film, what was fascinating was to understand that the political trauma that we're all living in, and to stop and acknowledge that is as, it's as painful or even more painful than losing a loved one. It's losing the whole dream you had of your own future as a person, as a country, as a nation, well, you have a model of that up close in your parents. Yeah. How are they processing all of that is happening? This I is think it's very tough for people of their generation who felt that 
finally they would be reaping the fruits of an entire lifetime and see everything become somehow darker than it was before. But at the same time, there is hope, and I, I, I think they see that as well, how hundreds and thousands of young people are for the first time becoming politically conscious. Greta, Ocasio in Brazil, Marielle, who was unfortunately assassinated but left many seeds and many young women of color became congresswomen inspired by Marielle Franco's struggle. Is there a message that you have for Americans in this moment or a message you want them to take away from your film, The Edge of Democracy? Yes, I think the film is a cautionary tale about the rise of the far right and how fast the erosion of democracy can happen. It's our responsibility to, as citizens, not to take democracy for granted and make sure our institutions keep strong. I think Americans in, American institutions are very strong, stronger than in Brazil, for sure. The impeachment was written for a reason, even though in Brazil it, we had an impeachment that was kind of an abuse of the Constitution. I think here in the, in the United States, the situation is very different. And it seems like the abuse of power that was allegedly done by the president in relation to the Ukraine is kind of the, the foundation of the impeachment law, why that law was written to prevent authoritarianism to ascend. And, and a call for action in terms of the global catastrophe we are in. I think more than anyone in the world, Americans can make a difference in pressuring companies and the government to be accountable for not mm. being responsible for collective suicide. I think we should end right there. That was beautiful. No, you're Thank great. you so much, Thank Petra. You. Thank you for your work. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, for you can find out more information about The Edge of Democracy and catch it on Netflix through our website. That's lauraflanders.org. And see all of our coverage of what's been happening in Brazil from the assassination of Mariela Franco to the resistance of women's groups and women's movements around the world. Just search Brazil in our search engine.